Okay, hi there. Uh, we're going to take a look at an Edexcel Paper 3 synoptic question. And again, go through some of the techniques that we think are good in terms of getting good marks for KAA, knowledge, application, analysis, and strong evaluation marks in the 25 mark question. This one is a slightly quirky topic. It's examined the micro and macroeconomic influences on the international competitiveness of the UK motor vehicle industry. Chosen this sector because it's one of those industries likely to be most affected by the Brexit vote and of course the, the, the subsequent negotiations and uh, the, the movement, painful at times, towards some sort of new trade deal. NXL paper three, the 25 mark essay question at the end of each daily response question marked on levels. And uh, you have two essay style questions to write, one from section A, one from section B. A choice, obviously, in each section. There are 16 KA marks and nine evaluation marks. And the key really is to get to level three on evaluation or level four on analysis, if you can. Remember to define key terms in the question when you, when you can. There are certain key STEM words that can often be a focus for evaluation. Our recommendation is that you build three KA points and three evaluation points. At least has, one has to be micro. At least one has to be macro. And crucially, and this is what we're going to focus on in this video, really try to build chains of analysis. Chains of analysis are crucial to getting a, a very good quality answer out on the exam paper, under the pressure of time, of course. Diagrams can be useful. I've got one coming up for you in a few minutes. Crucially, when you can, absolutely try and draw some data or some application from the extract to support your point. I'm only going to use one extract here, but you'll have more to use in, in the question. And crucially, come to a final brief reasoned conclusion at the end to support your evaluation. You may not have time to do this, um, but, but if you have, come to a reasoned judgment that will help the evaluation. So we're going to look at a question on the UK industry, the motor car industry. Uh, nearly 2 million vehicles produced in the UK last year. The vast, the vast majority were passenger vehicles, but there were also quite a few commercial vehicles, including the ubiquitous white van. The UK motor industry in, uh, contributes over £15 billion pounds of value added to GDP. It's just under 1% of total output. But it's nearly a tenth of the manufacturing sector. And they employ... You know, as you can see, over three quarters of a million people, not just in car assembly, but in the supply chain industries and in retailing and maintenance, etc. Of that 1.575 million vehicles produced in the UK, nearly four fifths are exported. So we export over 34 billion pounds worth of cars, but our imports of cars are over 40 billion. So in fact, there's a trade deficit last year. A huge number of auto parts and components come into the UK worth over £11 billion, most of which were imported from the EU 27, which of course is the 27 countries left in the EU after the UK leaves. There's a bit of background there, and we will use that data as part of application where we can in the answer. Okay? So the question is, if we examine the microeconomic and macroeconomic influences on the international competitiveness of the oil of the UK motor vehicle industry. So, um, where you can, you have to define key terms. It's good to define competitiveness at the start. Competitiveness is defined as the ability of businesses to compete successfully and profitably in both price and non price terms across international markets. That's a good definition. It's clear, it's precise, it's right. And then I go on, the core measure of cost competitiveness is something called relative unit labour costs, UK labour costs compared to other countries. Or they can, other indicators can be used. Car making in most countries is oligopolistic. So non-price competition, product design, product performance, branding, environmental impact, things like CO2 emissions, also important in terms of selling cars and vans, not just in the UK, but in overseas markets as well. Start your answer with a definition of what competitiveness means. Then you start to build your analysis. In each of these cases, I'm going to take you through the chains of reasoning approach. In other words, what you're looking to do is using connected phrases. So you're looking to build an argument and not try and miss out too many links in the chain. The red text reminds us that we're signposting in the exam. We like to signpost, tell the examiner exactly what we're doing. 
that gives them confidence you're going to write a quality answer. So one microeconomic influence on cost comp competitiveness in the industry is the growth of productivity of labour. People working the industry are efficient. If car firms based in the UK, such as Honda in Swindon, Toyota in Derbyshire, that's a bit of contextual knowledge there, if they can increase their productivity per hour worked, then the unit cost of the vehicles they make will fall. And this will allow them to sell more, both in domestic and overseas markets. So that's a bit of reasoning there. Productivity lowers the unit cost. How do we get there? Well, productivity might be improved by improving human capital through skills training and uh, leaner manufacturing, just-in-time manufacturing techniques. An improvement in productivity, Keteris Paribus, other things being the same, will lower the marginal and the average cost of making each car. Nice bit of theory there, a little bit of relationship. And this then allows, it's a connective phrase, car makers to cut their prices, but still making sufficient supernormal profit to reward shareholders. So if you can increase productivity, you can become more competitive, charge lower prices and make more profit to reward both workers and shareholders. There's my first chain of reasoning. That's how, so I'm going to start my answer. Then I'll leave it a couple of lines. However, whilst higher productivity will help control costs, other factors might have a counter effect on relative unit costs. So although labour productivity might be going up, other factors might be offsetting that. I'll give an example there. The UK government's enforced a minimum price of 18 euros per tonne for carbon emissions and increased costs for the vehicle industry. So tighter regulations and emissions are good for improving the environment, but they could also add to supply costs and perhaps make the UK vehicle sector less competitive, contrasted with emerging countries where environmental laws are often less strict. That's a nice bit of evaluation about cost competitiveness. Then leave a line or two. Uh, a macroeconomic influence on cost. So when you're starting your second point, go back to the question and signpost to the examiner that you're making a macro point. Okay, that helps to differentiate between micro and macro on this synoptic paper. Okay, so a macroeconomic influence is the external value of sterling, the exchange rate against the UK's main trading partners. Then a bit of application. Extract one. Now, actually, in the exam, I'd underline extract one. I'd double underline it so that the examiner is really clear that you're using the extract. Extract one mentions that 80% of cars assembled in the UK are exported. So the exchange rate does matter. After the June 2016 Brexit vote, sterling depreciated by 20% against the dollar, against the euro. Bit of a reasoning coming up, but this has helped to make UK car exports more price competitive because the foreign price of UK, UK cars will fall. This change in relative prices should lead to, chain of reasoning, expenditure switching effects, with overseas buyers more likely to buy British vehicles as they can get a better price. And the rise in export sales will then lift output, profit and employment, and allow producers to benefit from greater scale economies. So a fall in the pound makes car makers more competitive, should lead to an increase in demand, and that itself will then help them to achieve economies of scale and become more, even more competitive. That said, now this is this is one of our favourite evaluation phrases, so we now leave a line or two that we evaluate. That said, although in theory a weaker currency makes car makers more competitive, we love this phrase at due to two. In theory, a currency going down makes UK makers of cars more competitive. In practice, in practice, the impact of a lower pound may not be as positive. And then you have to explain that. Many car inputs, such as engine parts, are imported into the UK. So that should say into the UK from the EU. Extract 1 mentions that over 11 billion euros worth of parts came in during 2017. And a weaker exchange rate makes these parts more expensive. Car makers using just-in-time manufacturing techniques would be unlikely to hold huge component stocks again as a hedge against currency uncertainty. Therefore, the rising price of imported car parts to a large extent offsets the competitive gains from a weaker currency. And because it adds to inflationary pressure in the UK, it might also trigger demands for pay rises from people working in the industry. Every unions will bid for a higher pay to protect their, their real wages. This is good evaluation. Um, the first, the analysis point, let's go back a slide, shall we? The analysis point says that, 
A weaker pound makes car makers in the UK more competitive. Build the analysis. In theory, it does. In practice, other things are not the same. Imports become more expensive and many exports require imports. So we're, we're, we're analysing and then we're evaluating with that in theory, but then in practice approach. Off my third point, uh, it's a second macroeconomic influence, is uh, is continued tariff-free access to key export markets. So what makes businesses competitive is being able to access markets without artificial trade barriers. Let's see how I reason this through. The Britain is set to leave the customs union after Brexit transition in December 2020. That's good knowledge to show the examiner. Then I define a customs union. A customs union is a trade agreement between nations where they have tariff-free trade between them, but agree a common external tariff, CET, coming into the EU. Now, should the UK fail to negotiate a trade deal with the EU, car makers based in the UK face the prospects of overcoming a tariff of about 11, 10-11% on all non-EU vehicles. A tariff adds to export prices and, ceteris paribus, other things remaining the same, worsens price competitiveness and this could cause a decline in UK car sales and also the risk of lost jobs. And indeed, who knows, that may go further. Some firms, Honda, Ford, Nissan, may decide to relocate some of all of their production to lower labour cost countries inside the customs union. I've given three examples there. Poland, Slovakia and the Czech Republic all have quite big scaled car industries with low costs of labour and low land costs. So what's my point here? Tariff-free access is important for the competitiveness of the UK car sector. Uh, of course, once I've made that point, I can then put in a tariff diagram showing how if uh, UK producers trying to sell into the EU with a tariff, we'll find it harder than if there was no tariff. However, although the EU is the dominant market for car exports at the moment, the government in Britain, the Conservative government, is hoping that outside the customs union, Britain will be able to negotiate and complete new trade deals with other countries, China, India, emerging Asia, which will then increase the scope for exporting UK-made cars to other countries. Indeed, uh, there's also the prospect that the EU and the UK will agree a trade deal. Theory suggests that countries continue to, to trade a lot with each other in, with countries in closest proximity. So that's known as gravity theory. And game theory tells us that nations may continue to recognise the mutually beneficial gains from trade based on comparative advantage. So I'm bringing a bit of game theory into my into my synoptic answer to evaluate. Almost there. Well done for staying with us. I've made three analysis points, built three chains of reasoning, and I've tried to evaluate each of those points in turn. If I have time, I'd love to put in a final reason comment. If you get the time in writing the exam, that's okay. Oftentimes it's a bit of a rush, isn't it? And my point here is overall the main influence, according to me, for the UK is supplying high quality products as efficiently as possible and that requires relentless focus on lifting productivity and also investment, capital investment at the cutting edge, so the latest factory technologies to fast forward innovation. I would argue that it's important for the long term competitiveness of the UK car sector to retain existing levels of inward investment, which I would think would appear to be at risk if no trade deal can be reached with the EU. Well, there we go. This is how I would structure my answer to this particular question. Uh, hopefully you got out of it the importance of chains of reasoning, defining key terms, good use of application of the extracts, and evaluating each point in turn, hopefully leaving a little bit of time at the end to put in a final reasoned comment where you calibrate your arguments. I'll be putting some more 25 mark uh, essay plans on the web as we head towards the exams. I'm sure there is quite a few already on the YouTube site. But just for now, thanks for joining in on this video.